The anime begins by showing a teenage boy named Ryuji Kisaragi, who lives a normal life like an ordinary high school student. That morning, Ryuji went to school from his apartment, where he lived alone because his parents had been away for a long time to hunt for treasure weapons, more commonly referred to as lost precious. Upon arriving at school, Ryuji meets his female classmate, Misaki Aido, who seems to really like him but chooses to keep her feelings hidden. During the school lessons, Ryuji's female cousin, Eriko Nanao, suddenly bursts into the classroom to pick up Ryuji with the excuse that he has family matters to attend to. Once in the car, Eriko says that the real reason why she picked up Ryuji was that she needed his help to hunt for a treasure with an S-class or the highest class. It turns out that the Ryuji family is a family that has long initiated hunting down ancient weapons or valuable treasures and researching the history of these ancient objects. In this case, the treasure or lost precious refers to valuable objects such as ancient weapons or creatures with superpowers. Ryuji is a treasure hunter or lost precious level 10 who can control the power of a very strong lost precious. That's why Eriko recruited him to become the second member of her organization, Seven Tails Lost Precious. Eriko is Ryuji's cousin who has been abroad for a long time to continue her studies and joins the largest lost precious hunter organization called Society. And now, she intends to establish a branch organization under the auspices of the Society, but her organization still has not received approval from the Society. Eriko then tells Ryuji that she received information that tonight, an evil organization called Fong intends to transact an S-Class Lost Precious with someone. Therefore, she invites him to seize the Lost Precious from the Fong organization's hands so that the Lost Precious is not misused by them. After Fong's organization arrived at the transaction site and retrieved the briefcase containing the Lost Precious, Eriko immediately used her power to make all of Fong's members faint. After that, Ryuji rushed to take the suitcase and brought it into the car that Eriko was driving. Just as they were about to escape from the place, members of Fong's organization suddenly woke up and shot several bullets at the suitcase so that it accidentally opened. It turned out that the suitcase contained a little girl who immediately issued a huge burst of fire from her hands and killed all of Fong's members. After releasing her strength, the little girl suddenly fainted, so Eriko and Ryuji took her to their apartment. When Ryuji, carrying the little girl, and Eriko returned to their apartment, Misaki, who had been waiting for Ryuji, reflexively hid behind the grass. She saw Ryuji holding a girl and kept wondering who the girl was and what the girl's relationship with him was. On the other hand, Ryuji and Eriko are still trying to figure out who the girl's identity is and what is the power of the gold necklace that she is wearing. When the little girl woke up, she hugged Ryuji and repeatedly called his name as if they had met. Seeing this, Eriko asked him to look after the little girl for a while until the society's headquarters picked them up. When Ryuji went out to buy vegetables, Misaki, still waiting in front of the apartment, approached him to hand over his bag, which he had left in the classroom. After returning to his apartment, Ryuji and Eriko had dinner with the girl with the dishes that Ryuji had prepared. After investigating, Eriko and Ryuji finally found out that the girl was the legendary red dragon demon who could be seen from the red side of her hand. While washing the dishes, Ryuji observes the scales on the girl's hands and decides to name the girl Rose because her scales are shaped like roses. The following day when Ryuji, Eriko, and Rose were having breakfast, a helicopter suddenly appeared in front of their apartment. It turned out that the people who boarded the helicopter were officers and researchers from the society's headquarters who had come to pick up the three of them. After arriving at the society's laboratory, a male researcher named Tokura immediately observed and examined all parts of Rose's body and found that Rose was a red dragon born from a dragon egg that had been found 14 years ago. Red dragon demon forms usually have a pair of wings on their backs, but because Rose's age is still very young, those wings still haven't fully grown. When Ryuji helps examine the wings on Rose's back, he suddenly has a vision of his past and realizes that he was the first person to find Rose's egg in Albania several years ago. However, after Rose's egg hatched, he suddenly lost consciousness and parted with her. That explains why Rose is so close to Ryuji and keeps approaching him all the time. A few moments later, when Ryuji intends to return home, Eriko asks him to say goodbye to Rose because that might be the last time he sees her before she is taken away by the society. But before Ryuji and Rose could speak to each other, a young man named Onyx suddenly attacked the society's headquarters and barged into the laboratory. Onyx claims to be a black dragon demon engaged to Rose, and the necklace around her neck proves they are engaged. But Ryuji doesn't believe Onyx's words, so he chooses not to let Onyx take Rose away. Unfortunately, Ryuji's strength meant nothing in front of Onyx, and he could easily throw Ryuji and Eriko to the floor. Seeing Onyx's immense power, Rose decides to go with Onyx to prevent him from hurting Ryuji. After Onyx and Rose arrive at their palace, he reveals that he intends to marry her to gain the combined power of the two legendary dragons, so that he can rob all the powers of the lost precious in the world. On the other hand, Eriko invites Ruji to enter a special room where he can find a powerful sword that can be used to defeat the black dragon. 
The sword was made of dragon teeth that emitted superhuman strength, and only a high-level lost precious hunter could control the weapon's power. After mastering the dragon sword, Ryuji, Eriko, and several other society officers went to the tower where Onyx lived to save Rose. Upon arriving at the Onyx Tower, Ryuji immediately cut through the barrier in the tower using his dragon sword so that he and Eriko could sneak into the tower along with several other society officers. While the society's troops were fighting against Onyx's men, Ryuji, Eriko, and Tokura took the opportunity to look for Rose's whereabouts. When Ryuji managed to find her, Rose and Onyx seemed to be getting married at a church. As it turns out, Onyx incited Rose to hate Ryuji by saying that humans hate dragons so much and that humans can never unite with dragons. However, Ryuji tries to persuade Rose and convinces her that he doesn't hate her because he has loved her so much since their first meeting. Ryuji managed to move her heart, and finally, Rose chose to reunite with him so that Onyx's engagement necklace broke so easily. This made Onyx feel so angry that the fight between Onyx and Ryuji was unavoidable. The battle was so fierce that Onyx was forced to change into his perfect dragon form to get Rose back. In that crisis situation, Ryuji started to panic because he realized that his dragon sword would not be able to defeat Onyx, who had transformed into a dragon. However, when Ryuji and Rose put their hands together, Ryuji suddenly gained so much power that he could defeat Onyx with one attack. After successfully rescuing Rose, Ryuji and the others bring her back to live with him. A few days later, when Ryuji returned to the hotel after spending a whole day on vacation at the beach with Rose, he suddenly received a mysterious letter from someone to meet somewhere. It turns out that the person who sent the letter was a white dragon girl named Marguerite, who asked him for help to reclaim her sword from a high-level lost precious hunter named George Evans. Marguerite hears that Ryuji is a high-level lost precious hunter, so she believes he can help her get her sword back. The next day, Ryuji begins to search a town and asks the residents about a church that George is known to inhabit. After finding the church's location, he decided to come to the church alone. When Ryuji arrived at the church, he was surprised by George, who suddenly appeared behind him, but it turned out that George was a very friendly young man to churchgoers. Afterward, Ryuji asked him about the sword belonging to the White Dragon, the Ice Rage Sword. George then explains that several years ago, there was a dragon that attacked their city, but a young man managed to defeat the dragon using the sword. From then on, the Ice Rage sword was passed down from generation to generation to every young man who could master the sword so that they could protect the townspeople from the attacks of the White Dragon. George also explained that church leaders have long taught the doctrine that dragons are servants of the devil, so all dragons must be exterminated. Hearing that statement, Ryuji quickly covered the scale marks on Rose's hands when Rose suddenly entered the church so that George wouldn't know that she was a dragon. After that, Rose and Ryuji returned to the hotel to meet Marguerite and tell her about what he heard from George at the church. Ryuji doubted that the sword was the sword of the White Dragon, because George mentioned that the sword belonged to the townspeople and had been passed down from generation to generation for a long time. Hearing this, Marguerite tried convincing Ryuji that the sword belonged to her. Not long after, Ryuji's friends came and taught Ryuji to go to the summer festival together. Ryuji deliberately invited Marguerite so that she could be entertained by the festive atmosphere of the festival that night. While having fun playing prize shooting, Ryuji saw Marguerite, who was being bullied by some thugs. He intended to help her and chase away the thugs, but George, who happened to be passing by, chased away the thugs first. George, who did not realize that Marguerite was a dragon demon, fell in love with her. Fortunately, before George realizes that Marguerite and Rose are dragons, Ryuji immediately takes them to the top of the hill. While on the hill, Marguerite tells a story that a dragon once fell in love with humans, but one day the humans suddenly killed the dragon, so the dragons were angry and attacked the humans. Hearing the story, Ryuji realized that there was a resemblance between Marguerite's story and the story George explained at church. Not long after, George suddenly appeared up the hill and approached Marguerite, and it seemed that he really fell in love with her. Ryuji, Eriko, and Marguerite decided to use the opportunity so they could take Marguerite's sword secretly. The next morning, Eriko asks Marguerite to spend some time on the beach with George to distract him from the Ice Rage sword stored in the church. While George was having fun with Marguerite, Eriko and Ruji would secretly go to the church to steal the sword. The next day, they began to carry out their plan by inviting George to swim with Marguerite on the beach. Meanwhile, Ruji and Eriko rushed to the church using Eriko's car because they had little time. When Ruji and Eriko arrived at the church, an unexpected thing suddenly happened. A thief had already sneaked into the church and intended to rob the sword from the priest. Ryuji and Eriko had no choice but to use their powers to prevent the thief from taking Marguerite's sword. After successfully taking down the thief, the churchgoers and the priest praised Ryuji and thanked him. The church immediately reported the thief to police officers, and George finally learned about the incident from the church. As a result, Eriko and Ryuji's plan to secretly retrieve the sword again failed. When George was in the church, Onyx's men suddenly appeared and told him about the legendary Red Dragon. 
On the other hand, while Ryuji and the others were discussing, Rose advised Ryuji to tell the truth to George about the dragon sword and Marguerite. But he refuses because if George discovers that Marguerite or Rose is a dragon, George will surely kill them both, because he had been indoctrinated by church leaders to believe that dragons were servants of the demon king. Rose was annoyed because Ryuji didn't want to listen to her and chose to go to her room. After Rose leaves, Marguerite tells them her sword contains her uncle's soul, who died many years ago. A few moments later, Eriko began to realize that Rose had not yet come out of her room, and after they checked her room, it turned out that she had gone through the window. Ryuji, Eriko, and Marguerite immediately rushed to the church before George discovered that Rose was a dragon. At the same time, Rose, who had arrived at the church, told George that she was a dragon demon, but he was not surprised because Onyx's accomplice had already informed him. What Ryuji feared finally happened. George felt very angry with Rose's presence and intended to attack her. Luckily, Ryuji and the others arrived at the church in time so Ryuji could save Rose. The fight between Ryuji and George was finally unavoidable because George had been affected by the angry soul of Marguerite's late uncle. Ryuji and Rose combined their strength and attacked George with one hit, knocking him unconscious. Even though Marguerite's sword was destroyed in the fight, Marguerite was relieved that her uncle's soul had been freed from the sword. After that incident, George finally realized the truth about the sword and Marguerite, so he began to make peace with her. One day, when Ryuji was about to go to a party held by the society, he met a girl helping a cat from a tree. When he was about to ask if she was going to the society's party, she was silent and left him. While Ryuji is enjoying a party with Eriko and Rose, a young man named Sayaki approaches Eriko and tells her that recently there has been a lost precious thief known as Odd Eye. In the middle of the party, Ryuji again meets the girl he previously saw on the tree, and finally, she finds out that he is a lost precious hunter. The girl suddenly disappeared when he was about to talk to her, and a commotion began at the party. It turns out that the girl is Odd Eye, who has recently been stealing lost precious from hunters ranging from class A to class S lost precious. When the security officers were about to arrest the girl, for some reason, Ryuji even detained the guards so that she could escape. That night, Ryuji suddenly woke up after he heard something from outside the room. When he checks Eriko's room, it turns out the thief girl has reappeared to take Eriko's magic earring. Fortunately, it was prevented by Ryuji and Eriko, who suddenly woke up and immediately caught her. The girl is then tied up and interrogated about the purpose of stealing the earrings belonging to Eriko and the other lost precious. The girl named Ai said that she had an employer, and it was her employer who ordered her to steal a lot of lost precious. After hearing Ai's story, Ruji advises Ai to stop stealing because he believes she is actually a good person. Not long after, Sayaki suddenly shows up at their place to give Eriko the pair of earrings she lost at the party. But apparently, he only came to bring Ai home and kidnap Ruji because Sayaki was Ai's employer who told her to steal the lost precious all this time. After successfully taking Ruji and Ai away from Eriko's place, Sayaki keeps Ruji in the basement and invites Ai into his house. When Sayaki was out of the room, Ai secretly wore Eriko's magic earring out of curiosity about the power of the earring. It turns out that the earrings can make anyone who wears it hear the voices of other people's hearts, and she was shocked after knowing that Sayaki had only used her all this time. Ai, annoyed that she had been lied to by Sayaki, finally decided to leave that place and save Ruji. On the other hand, Eriko and Rose rush to where Ruji is being held, and they find out that Sayaki is actually a high-class lost precious thief named Furumori. Meanwhile, when Ruji and Ai were about to run away from Furumori's place, Furumori suddenly appeared and attacked them both. Fortunately, Rose and Eriko arrived just in time, and Rose immediately flew over to give Ruji the dragon tooth sword. After that, Ryuji and Rose combined their strength to attack Furumori until finally, he chose to disappear from that place. Shortly after, the society's officers arrived and informed them they had gathered information about Ai. The society officer discovered that Ai was actually the daughter of a member of the society's lost precious hunter who had been kidnapped several years ago. Hearing this, Ai, who had no one else, chose to return with her family. A few days later, Ryuji returns to school and continues his routine like a normal high school student. But this time, Rose will also go to school with him, and he agrees on the condition that she cannot reveal her identity as a dragon to others. When Ruji was at school, one of the society's envoys named Bianca came to his school to test Ruji's eligibility as a new member of the society by performing various physical tests. After that, Bianca also wants to test Ruji's strength by bringing in a giant robot named Neo Bowler. But in the middle of the fight between Ruji and the robot, the robot's remote control suddenly broke down, so the robot started to get out of control. Luckily, Rose arrived just in time and combined her power with Ryuji so they could defeat the robot with one hit. Seeing the enormity of Ryuji's strength, Bianca looked surprised because it was the first time she had seen such power. One day, when Ryuji and the others went camping on a hill near a lake, a girl named Safi, who took the form of a blue dragon, suddenly appeared and disturbed them. 
It turns out that the girl is one of Onyx's accomplices who intends to take revenge on Ruji for defeating Onyx in the previous fight. Fortunately, Eriko could easily repel Safi with her power, so Safi was even more cornered and chose to leave that place. Misaki, who saw Safi, looked surprised because she had never seen a human with wings. Rose tells Misaki she is a dragon and also has wings like Safi. Ai also shows her true identity to Misaki by showing her fox ears in front of her. One day, when Rose was about to walk home, Safi suddenly appeared and intended to attack her because she was jealous of Rose, who was loved by Onyx. However, Safi's attack hit her own body and made Safi have a fever, so Rose decided to take care of her at Ruji's house. While chatting, Rose tells Safi that she prefers Ruji over Onyx, even though they are two very different beings. Safi then advised her to hold a maturity ceremony with Ruji so that he could be united with her forever. Before Safi left, Rose asked how to do the maturity ceremony, and she then explained to Rose. After Ruji and Eriko returned to the apartment, Rose invited Ruji to have a maturity ceremony together. Eriko intended to find out about the ceremony first, but Rose stopped her and immediately told Ruji to kiss the side of her hand. Not long after Ruji did it, Rose suddenly fell limp and had a high fever. Since that incident, Rose suddenly turned stiff and shy in front of Ruji, so the situation between them became awkward. In addition, another strange incident occurred when Rose suddenly fainted during gym class. As a result, she was rushed to the society's laboratory to be treated until her fever returned. Seeing Rose's condition, Ruji became confused and worried, so he interrogated Safi, but she didn't know anything either. Safi then suggested Ruji meet with Onyx, and he informed Ruji that Rose had performed the maturity ceremony incorrectly. Onyx explains that the dragon maturity ceremony should be performed by other dragons, not human beings like Ruji. Onyx then says he will take Rose back because only he knows how to heal her. Ruji initially objected to handing Rose over to Onyx, but for her safety, he finally had no choice but to follow Onyx's advice. After handing Rose to Onyx, Ryuji returned to his normal school days. However, he still really misses Rose and doesn't know whether she will come back or not. Elsewhere, Safi looks surprised that Rose suddenly doesn't remember anything and doesn't recognize her. It turns out that Onyx's female assistant, Kai, has deliberately made Rose forget her memories so that she can't remember anything about Ryuji anymore. A few days later, Marguerite goes to Ryuji and tells him that Rose just has a common cold. Onyx deliberately made Rose look as if she was seriously ill so that he could snatch her from Ruji because Onyx still wanted her strength. Hearing this, Ruji and Eriko rush to pick up Rose before Onyx took her to a further place. At the same time, Onyx and Rose are getting ready to go to Albania before her memory returns. However, the plane they were on was suddenly restrained by Marguerite, who turned the plane around using her ice power. Eriko had also arrived at the place and immediately got rid of the pilot on the Onyx plane. While Ruji and the others were trying to prevent Onyx's plane from taking off, Safi secretly gave Rose ice cream so she could remember something. When Rose remembered Ruji again, Ruji and the others had managed to sneak into the plane and approached her. Rose and Ruji finally reunite and express their feelings for each other. Unfortunately, Onyx suddenly turned into a giant dragon that took the plane flying into the sky during that happiness. Fortunately, Onyx was destroyed after Ruji and Rose kissed each other and united the power of their immense love. After successfully defeating Onyx, Ruji and Rose are back, living their lives together. The moral that can be learned from this anime is not to easily judge others who are different from us or make negative assumptions about them before we even get to know them.